Good morning. Good morning, Om Shanti, and thank you very much for inviting me once again to be with you all in Indonesia. I've never been to Indonesia physically, but it seems I've made a couple of trips with all of you. So that's very, um, very nice. So today's topic is a very interesting topic, I feel, because we live in a world, actually we live in a world of abundance. Even if you think about it, even when I was growing up, I spent part of my childhood in India um, and part of my childhood here. And uh, even when I was growing up 50 years ago, um, there were less resources and you didn't expect so many resources. But now um, there is so much more uh, because of the advancement of technology. I'm sorry, there's this background noise. Hopefully that won't last for long, the neighbor. Um, and, and today, because of technology, because of advancement of science, there is um, so much available to us. Um, whilst I would definitely agree that the distribution of those resources is not very even, but actually it's not those who don't have the resources that hanker after them. It's the ones who already have resources. Those who already have a lot want more. Isn't that an interesting human psychology that is at work? So I think it's a, it's a very powerful topic to explore at this point in time when the world in, is in a sense in need of um, so much more than just a physical uh, aspect of uh, life actually. Uh, so let's just start. I'd like to start with a few moments of uh, centering ourselves and being present here in this space. I know that, um, and it's something that I always say, some of you may have heard me say this before, because when you're on Zoom, it's very easy to think, okay, well, I'll do this, and then I'll listen as well. I'll be cooking, or I'll be, I'll be ironing, or I'll be, I don't know, gardening, or out for a walk, or whatever. And it's good to do that, but I think there are moments in these uh, opportunities, it's also good to sit down and and take the opportunity to uh, be still, be quiet, and perhaps internalize some of our thoughts and our feelings in such a way that um, we can give meaning to them, we can analyze them, we can understand them, and we can own them. So let's just sit together. Close your eyes if you are in a position where you can, and if you're not, in fact, it's even better to keep the eyes open and focus your eyes, but let your attention be inside. Take a deep breath, inhale deeply, all the way down into your stomach, into your belly. Watch the belly rise and then exhale, long exhale, through your mouth if you can. Let's do this a few times. And as you do this, notice how your breath changes its rhythm, it slows down, and as it slows down your own sense of presence becomes heightened. As you observe, is slowing down, softening of your own energy. You become comfortable inside your own self. 
and there is ease. And somehow a sense that your heart energy or your heart center softens. And in this softness, you too become aware of your own softness. your gentleness. And in a sense, you begin to recognize your own capacity, your own vastness of being. It's as if your own energy becomes so expansive that you are able to embrace all that is around you. This is the awareness of the self as a spiritual being that transcends, transcends all physical limitations. This expansiveness, this ability to embrace everything beyond right and wrong, beyond good and bad, beyond success and failure, better than, worse than. And in this expansiveness. You're able to recognize your own ability to generate and create complete cohesiveness you're able to generate and create acceptance and comfort not as a, just a physical state of being, but a subtle inner state of being with whatever you have however much you have. And you realize that you are the seed yourself that has created the tree of your life with its seasons of fruits and flowers, with its season of abundance and lack of it. As you absorb yourself in this experience, you are able to hold all that is and all that will be. Let's just sit here for a moment or two. Go back to your breath. 
Take a deep breath again. And this energy of vastness, this energy of cohesiveness, allow that to be absorbed into yourself by your breath, by your consciousness, and by your awareness. Om Shanti. Thank you. I sense that all of you did take the time. I feel the presence and the energy of all of you here right now. So this is a very interesting topic, as I said, abundance abundant mindset and you know some years ago as you know there was this um, aspect that had risen about the secret and that you can draw everything to yourself that you want money relationships a building a house a job whatever it is that you wish simply by creating a vision and people did attempt that. People did begin to do that. And they were, become, they were able to be successful in that. But I also know that many got it, but they lost it again. So really in today's world, it seems that our sense of self, our sense of identity comes from what we own, how much we own, who owns as much as I do or less than me. And this physical um, uh, sense of abundance or physical sense of uh, the need or feeling that I have a lot is so prevalent that it drives human beings to all sorts of conditions and states of being. So why is that? Why is it that we have this need to feel that we have endless amount of things and that we're overflowing with it? And I asked that question because the, question, the, the thought really for me is how much do I need to live to survive, let's say not just survive, we wanna do more than survive, we wanna thrive. And it's true, we wanna thrive. And when we think about thriving, we don't think about thriving uh, necessarily with just the physical uh, growth. For me, thriving is more to do with my internal state of being and a feeling that I'm growing, I'm becoming more happy, I'm becoming more peaceful, I'm becoming more loving, I'm becoming more kind, I'm becoming more compassionate. That for me is the real sense of thriving and then feeling that I have, a, I have a big house and lots of money and amazing things. Why is it that people need that physical one of the, the things, my sense is that um, fear, fear of uh, not having when I need it, fear of um, losing the little that I have, or fear of death even. Somehow, even the fear of death, when you think that you have enough, it's as if you're going, it's gonna live with you forever, which we know is not the case. Nothing is forever. Everything we have, we lose. There isn't a, uh, necessarily uh, the guarantee that whatever I have is gonna live forever or, or stay forever, or I'm going to stay forever. But somehow if I surround myself, <clears throat> Sorry. 
with everything, then I'm going to be okay. So that fear is one thing. The second aspect um, for me is the aspect that, um, which we call greed, that it gives me a greater sense of self. It gives me a sense of achievement. It gives me a sense of success because my life, that my life is defined by what I have and how much I have. And so this, this greed, and this greed is born out of lack of internal sense of joy and happiness. The reality is that the human spirit is the essence of joy and happiness. The spirit itself doesn't need anything to be happy and joyful. When I'm in that awareness that this is who I am and I can focus my attention inside that state of being, then I don't necessarily feel that I need the external, but it's because of the lack of this deep inner awareness of who I really, who truly am, that as this spiritual awareness and consciousness, I am peace, I am love, I am truth, I am joy, this is who I truly am. When that's not there, then this greed takes over and this sense of myself that I need greater, I need more to have success. And the irony is that people will go to all extremes to get that. Once greed sets in, there is lying, cheating, deceiving, and we become very self-centered in that state of consciousness, in that state of awareness. And we don't think about the impact that we're having, our actions are having on other people. We're willing to let others go without for ourselves to have more of. And you know, this, um, when we have this sense of achievement, what happens, as you all probably know, that there is a, a chemical that is released in our brain called the dopamine. And it's the happiness chemical that when I get more, when I feel I've achieved something, even a simple thing like sending off an email or replying to a text message or whatever it might be, when I do that, then I have this, uh, this adrenaline, this chemical rush through my brain and gives me a sense of pleasure. And actually, that doesn't last forever. The effect of that pleasure, that, that dopamine is very short-lived, but because it's something that we want to experience, we want to keep going back to that experience of the rush of dopamine so that I keep wanting, I keep uh, going there. And this is how addiction is born. It's not that I'm addicted to the act itself. It's a, it's a consequence. What I'm becoming addicted is to this, this temporary rush of dopamine that happens inside me. And that drives me to become addicted to external situations and circumstances that make me feel a sense of fullness, sense of achievement, sense of um, success. So you can just see how all of these things, ultimately what it's doing is making me the spirit bankrupt of my own deeper sense of self and achievement, my, my deeper sense of joy and peace and happiness and love. And so this external sense, the desire for abundance, is a very false sense of pleasure and joy. So then why is it? So what does it really mean to have abundance or abundant mindset? You know, I'm, I spent part of my childhood in India. And even today when I go, 
I see that, as I said earlier on, it's not the poor that have the consciousness of abundance or the need for abundance. It's the people who already have that have the need for abundance. Isn't that interesting? The poor people are happy to make the sky their blanket and a brick their pillow and, um, and have dry chapati and, and chili pepper and oil on their chapati. Whereas people who eat five course meal, they want more and greater and, and um, a need for, for that. You know, they also say if you if you have a lot and you have you feel you don't have anything, then you don't have anything. But if you have a little and you feel you have a lot, then you have the world, you have everything. And so it's 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 really about this aspect of consciousness that do I have enough? Knowing also that everything is an energy. You know, whether it's money or whether it's objects, everything is energy. And you know, when I have what I, when I use what I have, then I'm, I'm sharing what I have. And as I share, then it's as if what I give out is what comes back to me. People who have less and use what they have to serve others, never have the feeling that they will have to go without. Because they know that they, the, what comes as a result of their sharing is the happiness, is the joy, is a sense of achievement, a sense of um, this joy that makes you feel that I have so much. These external things are only temporary and short-lived. But the fact that I, I am able to share with others what I have, that is what gives me joy and happiness. This is the interesting thing. And if you have a lot and you keep it locked up in your, in your safe, does it increase? Or does it say as much as it is? Or because of your, of your narrow-mindedness, because of your limited consciousness, with time even, if you have lots of money and you keep it in your bank, in your, in your uh, nowadays even the banks don't give much interest, right? Uh, unless you have so much that you can, you can earn interest from that. But generally speaking, you don't get much. If you keep it sitting in, in a safe even somewhere, then with time, the value decreases of what you have if you're just hanging on to it. But if you actually use it to sow seeds for your future. So it's not just for your future, but it's like, you know, the, the, the saying in India is that you give with one hand and you receive with the other hand. So when you are sharing, when you are uh, uh, giving, especially to those who are in need, not just anybody, you know, here when we're talking about sharing what you have, it's not about giving to just people who already have, giving it to people who need, giving it to people who, who don't have so much. And when you give it, then that sense of pleasure, that sense of joy increases the, the feeling of having so much. And so, you know, abundance is a state of consciousness in, in that way, that if I think I have enough, or I have a lot, then I have a lot. But this aspect of attracting abundance, for those aspects, I do need to make some sort of, um, or al allow the awareness to grow, the consciousness to grow. And I was thinking about this. You now, when I first um, started living at the retreat center and we would meet guests, I would meet guests at retreats, especially guests that were not uh, always familiar with the spiritual principles. And simple things like in today's world, you know, people go to restaurants and even at home, people cook. They cook so much because they don't want to be running out and they throw away the extra or people take food in their plate 
because it's just there. And then after a while, they decide that they don't want to eat it, either because they don't like it or they were so busy talking that the time passed by, passed by and they were not able to finish what they were, what was on their plate, or they just don't feel like it anymore. And food easily ends up in the rubbish bin. It ends up in the dustbin. Now just think about that simple daily happening that happens in people's homes, in people's lives. For me, I'm super aware that every grain that I receive, I, I receive it with gratefulness, but also that it's come to me to consume, not to be thrown away. You know, Daddy Janki said once um, as part of that, and it's something that I would then share with the guests. The first night the guests would come and they don't know our philosophy. So they would take the food and the kitchen would come to me, the, the servery would come to me and say, look, People are taking food and you get some people who will throw away food. Some people don't do that. But some, the, so the people would come to me and say, look, people are throwing away food. They're just taking it and throwing it away. And, and so I would explain to them that if you have something, when you waste it and you waste it, when you need it, you don't have it. So, you know, when we have things, we don't have the awareness that we should save, we should economize, we should use it in a worthwhile way. We have to um, um, make use of what we have instead of throwing it into the dustbin. So this aspect that if you, if you respect what you have, then you will always have it. And so this aspect of abundance, and now abundance, really I'm redefining abundance here. It's not that it comes overwhelmingly to me. Actually, physically it comes to me that I have the feeling that I have lots. I'm defining abundance as a state of awareness that I have as much as I need and even more. When you really think about it, how much do you need to eat every single day? Actually, and how many times a day do you eat? Three, four, five, all the teas and coffees and biscuits and snacks, whatever you have and your meals. Probably up to five, six times a day, cups of coffee or whatever it is that you have in between meals too. That's a lot. But honestly, ask, your question, ask yourself a question. Do you need all that you eat? I'm 150% sure that you will find the answer that you don't. While I would admit that everybody's needs are different. So some need more, some need less, but I am pretty sure that all of us don't need to consume as much as we consume. So when you have value for what you have, then you will always have what you have. This is a, a very powerful principle. And gratefulness for what you have. Everything comes to you. You know, when a child is born, when a baby is born, ba the baby comes into this world with this awareness, with this, it doesn't think, will I get this? Will I not get? It gets everything. It knows that it gets everything and it will get everything. The mother and father, friends, relatives, everybody provides whatever the child, the child needs. It's only when you get older, when we get older, that we begin to think that, um, you know, I need to do this or I need to do this to get that. And we become manipulative or forceful or controlling to get what we want because we lose the trust that the universe is there to provide for us. Look at nature. Could we live without nature? With all aspects of nature, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. All of these five physical elements, actually their intrinsic nature is to serve. They are there to provide for us, whether it's roof over our head or food in our stomach or clothing this body, whatever it is, nature is there to serve us. Why is it that nature is defiant now? Because we became greedy and started to manipulate nature. 
We started to control nature. We started to make nature um, give up its own, in a sense, intrinsic nature. In, 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 in its state of being. Even today, and here I am looking at all the, the tree in the backyard here, it's full of apples, tiny little, little apples. It's not counting how much. So many people can eat from that. But it's human beings that will begin to quantify everything. Our sense of abundance is through quantifying. Yet quantifying is not, it's, it's the awareness that's, that makes me have the feeling that I have abundance. So the second aspect is gratefulness. The more grateful I am for what I have, the more will come to me. And, and by using what I have in a worthwhile way, by using what I have in sharing, by appreciating through gratefulness for what I have, the more comes and I become worthy to receive more. I have to create worthiness through my own qualities to make the qualities, my own qualities, like the qualities of nature, of sharing, of giving, of exuding what I have. And the interesting thing is that the soul, the spiritual energy, spiritual being is always giving. It's always sharing. We only stop sharing when our consciousness kind of implodes into itself. And I become so full of awareness of my own needs only. That's when consciousness implodes. And in a sense, funnily enough, I get in my own way from receiving abundance, from getting so much. No, when, when they talk about saying, you know, okay, visualize a, a check of a million dollars or a million pounds, whatever it is, and, and you will get a million pound check. This visualization, it's energetic thing and you might get it. But keeping it is another thing. So in order for me to really, to, to receive, I actually have to have the, not just the, the vision uh, of abundance, but I actually have to make myself qualify for what is to come to me. And you know, everything in life wants to, um, wants to be giving wants to be sharing. If you think about it, every little object that you have in your home is there to serve you, to, to make you more comfortable, more easy. But if you appreciate that, if you value that, then it's gonna multiply even more. And so really, uh, is my glass half full or half empty? It's an analogy that you've all heard about. That is my glass half full or half empty. I could look at it and think, man, I've got only half a glass of water. But I could look at it and think, wow, I've got a half a glass of water and I can drink that. Instead of wanting that glass to be full before I've even made use of it. And so this consciousness is a very powerful consciousness. So remaining positive, remaining respectful, remaining, maintaining the awareness of gratefulness qualifies me to receive so much and to have as much as I ever need. So I like this awareness I like this state of being where I think I'm, I'm, I have a lot. I don't need any more than I have. That's when people come and give me. I remember Daddy Janki um, talking about this and saying that, you know, when you have this, this awareness of the right, actually, that I have a right to what I have. And I also have a right to share what I have. In fact, 
and uh, it's um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not just a right to share what I have, um, but I have to. I must share what I have. Then that's bound to grow and increase. So let's stop for a moment here and take stock in a sense of what you have. And it's also actually bringing the awareness of God, the divine, the supreme being who is just abundance, abundance, ocean, vastness of peace, love, unconditional love. And yet that one doesn't possess anything, doesn't own anything, doesn't um, feel the need to be holding on to anything. And it's also our job, it's also our task to be able to sit with that awareness, with that energy, so that we are also able to hold that in our minds and in our hearts, so that uh, we claim the rights of who we are, claim the rights of all that is rightful, rightfully ours to have. So let's just stop for a moment. Take a deep breath. And sense the presence of everything. Expand your perception of everything that's around you. Whether you're in your home, whether it's your outside, out in a park or a landscape, whether at your dining table or whether at your desk. Take stock of all that is around you to serve you, how it enhances your life no matter how small it is, how insignificant it might be. And allow yourself to feel the gratitude of the presence of that. Do you need anything else? You have a roof over your head. You have your meals each day. You have your comfort and ease each day. How grateful are you for that? That grateful that you could share it with someone else? How respectful are you? That you savor its presence in your life. We run around and chase. And you know, abundance is not just with wealth and possessions. Chasing after recognition, respect from others. And when we don't get what we want, we make ourselves feel so small and unimportant but our need to receive 
from specific people. And yet we all have people in our lives that love us, that respect us, that share so much with us. And we chase after those who may not for whatever reason. Allow your heart to feel its fullness, to recognition. And use that recognition to sow the seed of future by sharing, by giving to others. Love, respect, wealth, time, company, if nothing else. Bring in, in your awareness, the divine, the supreme, God, our eternal parent, who never calculates how much he gives, she gives, but is always willing to share and to give. Now ask yourself, do I need any more? Do I need anything more? Do I need anyone more? And I'm sure the answer will be, I have abundance. Om Shanti. Thank you, sister. That was amazing. Um, you've brought a lot of points to our awareness. How, why we have fear or why does one have fear? And also how greed is born because it is the lack of, as you mentioned, lack of joy and happiness. And also, I really like some of the points that you mentioned that have value for what you have, and then you will always have what you have. That is beautiful. It's something that we need to remind ourselves every day. It's like a self-talk that we need to do with ourselves within us. So that, that's beautiful. And also that human beings have quantified everything. That is so true indeed. Everything that we see and we quantify it, even our own personal, like, for example, our looks, our face, our hair, you know, everything is quantified. Oh, this one has more hair and, you know, I have not enough hair. And that is so true. So, yeah. So the scarcity mentality is what keeps us from achieving our goals. And this is what we need to change. An abundance mindset what I've taken from today is refers to that paradigm that there is plenty out there for everybody, for everybody. So thank you, sister. It's beautiful what you shared. And I'm sure the audience um, who's joined us today will agree with me that this is what we need to practice every day, what sister has just shared with us. So we have a few questions. There's actually a statement also I'll just share it with you maybe if you would like to add something to it or maybe you would like to clarify it is very difficult to feel fear or sadness while feeling grateful at the same time is there anything you would like to add to that oh yes I agree so choose the former choose 
to feel grateful, choose to feel happy instead of choosing to feel deficit, choosing to see that. And so it is about changing our consciousness anyway, isn't it really? That I look around and this tree in my back garden is got a huge branch missing and I could look at it thinking, my God, it's got this huge branch missing. Or there's the one branch that's full of apples, full of apples, I could look at those. So it's about making a choice as to what I want to see and how I want to see it. And we have to promise ourselves that we have to see the positive. We have to see what does work and not what doesn't work. I think what I also understand from what you shared earlier is that it's basically like a ripple effect. What we give out is what comes back to us. So this is where we have to be very, very careful. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we have some questions. How can one cultivate an abundance mindset during this pandemic? <laughs> That's a really good question. Look, um, I know in the UK, um, there's definitely been this thing that people were at home uh, people couldn't go out to work and they were doing double jobs because they were looking after their homes as well as doing their work from home and all of that. Um, there was that complaint, but there were also people who uh, were saying that they're having family time that they never had before. They are having time to just be and not just be in the rat race of always thinking that they have to be doing and achieving and successing because there is nothing to achieve and succeed in anymore right now in during the pandemic. So um, it's about, again, the mindset. What is it that I'm grateful for? What is it that I'm receiving that I was not receiving before? To the point that some people I heard saying they would never be able to go back to work in the same way that they went back to, they were going to work before. They would want to now make choices. You know, here in the UK, house prices have rocketed up. And the reason is because people are now seeing more and more that they're gonna do work from home. So it's about again, and it's not forever. This is not gonna be forever. It's gonna be for however long it's going to be. We don't know how long it's going to be for, but why not see it as an opportunity? Why not? And my feeling, I'm on a spiritual journey and even on uh, many of the spiritual people from my, uh, my community have complained for years. We're so busy, we're so busy, we're doing, 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 we're not stopping. And here we are, not just the spiritual people who've been given the opportunity, but the entire world. I mean, can you imagine every country in the world is in the same boat? And somehow, I think God, the universe, nature, elements is giving every single one of us an opportunity to explore and go inside ourselves. That when we do that, then we're going to be able to find the gems that exist in, you know, also training ourselves to do things that we've never done before. For me, it's a great thing. I don't find learning new things a challenge unless of course it's technology but even that I'm trying to see what I can learn what I can learn to do myself and not rely on other on, on other people as well and so I think that it's a question of looking at things in the way and uh, unless of course I'm so attached to my old ways of being that I can't let go and I can't be free from that so again it's about seeing how is it? How am I seeing things? Thank you, sister. Our next question is, um, some newborn babies are born in rich people's home and some are poor. Um, is that a karma of the newborn babies? You know, I think that um, who it's, who's doing the seeing and judging? of what that baby's karma is. I am, that baby isn't right now. That baby is where, where he or she is and they're just gonna be the baby and the world is gonna serve them. Their mother is gonna serve them. Whatever little she serves, she's gonna serve. That baby doesn't sit there judging itself or ju looking at other people and judging what's happening around it. Whereas we, who we think we know so much, we sit and judge what's happening and what's not happening. And so having said that, 
yes, my understanding would be it's a karmic situation that's playing out. But that's, I don't want to say it in the way that that is kind of dismissing or, or seeing that it's bad karma that made them like that. Bad karma made them go to a poor family and good karma made them go to a rich family. It's not that. In fact, it's actually more for my own peace of mind that each one is, is receiving what is theirs to receive. It's not about good or bad. And as I said, the baby is not going to see anything. The baby is just going to live in its joyful state. And we have to do the same. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that often people use karma as a weapon. And that's not what it's meant to be. It's not meant to be that. It's meant to be more, in fact, a peace of mind that, okay, it is what it is. And each one is living their own situation. We have to learn to see it like that. Okay, thank you, sister. Um, what are the affirmations that we can tell ourselves to create an to create an abundance mindset? As you mentioned, the secret, the law of attraction. Yeah, I mentioned the law of attraction, and uh, but I'm not advocating just the law of attraction because I feel that you can attract it to yourself just by thinking about it, uh, but you haven't made yourself worthy of it. You haven't made yourself uh, qualify for it. And therefore you might have it because you attract it, but it may not necessarily stay. But if you qualify yourself, if you make yourself worthy of it, then it will come and it will stay forever. And so um, if I had to create affirmations for myself, I would say, um, I'm grateful for all that I have. I'm grateful for the small and big victories. I'm grateful. I love the people that I have in my life. I love them for what they are, all the positivity and goodness that they have inside of them, uh, that they, uh, the contribution that they make in my life and what I take from them. It's again, a positive outlook, seeing that positive outlook and, and not just affirmation. Again, I'm not somebody who just believes in affirmation just by repeating those good, good, good attitude or mindset verbally or even in your thought only. For me, it's important to actually see it really with gratefulness and accept that greatness, gratefulness that life is offering me. And having accepted it, use it, use it and use it as in, um, appreciate the beauty of it so yeah if you need affirmations to repeat they have a role to play for a period of time but it's not forever you have to begin to take ownership begin to um, participate in creating uh, abundance by seeing and sharing and appreciating so would you say, sister, it's like fake it till you make it kind of a thing that um, <laughs> even if you don't have it, but just say, yes, I have it, I have it. And But I have a question for everybody in this group here. Is there anyone who doesn't have it? Do they not have a roof over their head? Do they not have a, a meal on their food on their plates when it's time to eat? Do they not have two sets of clothes to wear? Everybody in this group. I'm seeing a lot of people here that I recognize the names of. And so I don't believe that we don't have. I would still come back to, it's not about faking. You have, appreciate what you have. Be grateful for the smallest victories that you have. Be grateful for one meal, you know, you know the story of the Brahma Kumaris. Brahma Baba, the founder of the Brahma Kumaris, didn't know at one point what food he was going to feed 200 people. At 11 o'clock in the morning, he doesn't know how food is going to arrive on 200 people, pe people's plates at one o'clock. And yet, 
He had faith that it will come and money arrives and food is acquired. And so it's also about that. So for me, it's not about abundance in that way. For me, I have, I have plenty right now. Right now, I have plenty. And if I have enough to consume and share a little bit with someone else, then I know that it's gonna come. Okay, our last, last question is very similar. It's actually two, three questions, but it's similar. So I'm just gonna put them together. Um, one asked that, how do we um, tell our children to develop this abundance mindset? And the other was that, how do we encourage others to have an abundance mindset? And one more says, if I have gratitude, but some in the family do not have, how to create that awareness, how to send blessings of abundance to people who do not have it or feel it? Uh, can I just say the answer to all of those questions is the same. You demonstrate abundance yourself. You demonstrate gratefulness for your own self and other people will see that and learn that. They may not learn it today because of their own mindset but tomorrow or the day after they'll definitely learn it but if you're demonstrating a life of greed compulsion if you're demonstrating a life that i don't have enough the negativity then you can't send any blessing you can send blessing but it's not going to reach because you're doing one thing but showing something else demonstrating something else and so i have to live through gratefulness that's all I have to do. I have to live the consciousness of abundance myself. I don't need to strive. I don't need to manipulate. I don't need to be greedy. I don't need to do any of those things in order to show someone else that um, they too have plenty. If anything, just show them what you have instead of what you don't have. So yeah. it's really an example. Yeah, basically walk the talk. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just have a few comments here that I'm just going to read it out to you and then we can end. We have to th thank the almighty. Whatever we have is a gift from God and we have to appreciate little things also around us. Um, another one is really when we start counting the smallest of the things that we have, it comes endless to know how much we should be grateful for. Right. And lastly, recently we had our very dear sister who um, contracted the virus and she says, I stay grateful during my COVID period by maintaining myself, not having any complaint to my, about my situation, my food and also the virus. Mm -hmm. so I also had, um, in fact, I had um, COVID-19 when I was in India, when it was really bad in India uh, at the beginning of April, middle of April. And um, I had an amazing experience myself too. Not a single thought about why, what, anything. I just remember thinking, all I have to do is breathe. There was a time when there were no beds available in Ahmedabad, a hospital, and I got a bed in, somebody else went on the sofa who had COVID, who went on the sofa because she didn't need oxygen, I needed oxygen, and I got a hotel uh, bed, and, uh, sorry, not hotel, hospital bed, and um, I got treatment, and after five days, I was much, much better, and no sense of feeling, oh my God, this is so terrible, I shouldn't have come to India, I should have stayed in London, no thoughts, at all and, and I just feel that it made crucifix into a thorn. Thank you sister. Um, we just have one more question is that okay? This is just yeah, come in sure. now. What about people complaining of work anxiety? What about them? So I guess what um, sister here is trying to say is what should we do or how do we help them? By um, staying calm just staying calm again and um, uh, giving uh, in their presence, especially giving them the energy of calm, of peace, of love, of God's presence. So that if, because when they're like that, words don't do anything, words don't work. And so you really have to create such a powerful energy 
of, uh, of peace, of love and God's presence so that it incognito way it begins to affect them. Thank you once again, sister. It's been a very empowering session, I must say. And whoever is today with us, feel free to um, open your videos. And if you want to say thank you to Sister Manda, thank you very much once I, again. I'm seeing so many familiar names. It's so lovely. Maya, I haven't seen Maya in years. Maya Israni. I haven't seen for years. I'm seeing lots of different people. I'm seeing Bibla from New York. I'm seeing Milu, Milu saying Milu Melwani's name. So, so lovely that, well, I can't see you, but at least you can see me and you can hear me. Um, so that's great. Yeah, that's why I thought, let me tell them to open their videos so that you can meet them and yeah. greet them. Lovely. Yeah. So thank you once again. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We will be having our next session on coming Saturday on the 31st of July at 4 p.m. Jakarta. I've dropped my number, so feel free to message me and I shall update you with the upcoming sessions. And in August, we have Sister Jenti joining us. So do keep me informed if you want to get the future updates and once again thank you so much sister manda for today's session thank you thank you all very thank much thank you to you Hello, for sharing it was wonderful thank you om shanti om shanti okay bye bye have bye. a nice weekend thank you you too om shanti